Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hear this and you may not like it. I was sent out to pastor my first church at 25. No father, no mother. No, how did you eat? I left my house, my, my home at the age of 21. My wife met me alone. For your father at 21 to say, now you can go. I've trained you well. You should know that I went through rigorous training. So the true success of parenting is when they leave your house. Not when they are still there. When he is old, he will not depart from it. The message translation says it this way. It said, point your kids in the right direction. So whether you know it or not, you are pointing your children somewhere now. Point your kids in the right direction. When they are old, they won't be lost. Okay, you, thank you for that one. Good news, translation. Teach children how they should live. And they will remember it all their life. No matter how much you hate Oedipo, you can't kill him because I am him. If anybody here says, I don't like how this pastor talks, you don't watch Bishop. If what I'm teaching makes you angry, you don't watch Faith Abanako. Train up a child in the way that he should go. He didn't say train a man. One of our elders in Abuja used to tell me, say, sir, you know I love you so much. There are people that can never change. I believe the Bible, but um, this man is in his 70s on the way to 80. He said, sir, uh, anything you teach no problem. But as an adult, there are things they can't learn again. He told me, and I believe it. How will you bend a fish that is already dried? I say, no, thank God I don't have children. You will soon have one. So I say, I'm not yet married. You will soon marry. And if you are way younger listening to me, this will help you know where there may have been mistakes in raising you up and how to correct it in raising your own. Yeah. Number one key, biblical wisdom key for successful parenting is catch a vision for successful parenting. Catch it as a vision. Catch a vision for successful parenting. In Proverbs 29 verse 18, he said, where there is no vision, the people perish. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and verse 15, Genesis 13, he said, and the Lord said unto Abraham, after the Lord was separated from him, COVID has taken many people away from us. So it's a good time to catch one, a vision. Lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art. Northward, southward, eastward and westward. That's Genesis, Malachi, Matthew, Revelation. For as far as your eyes see it, <laughs> I will give to you. And I love this. I've preached this many times. But for the first time, my eyes was open to verse 17. After you catch the vision, what happens? Place verse 17 on the screen. Now, arise, walk through the land. And in the length and the breadth of it, for I will give it to you. Amen. What you see is what you get. You can't walk in what you have not seen. Catch a vision of successful parenting. It is impossible to walk in the light of what you haven't seen. A vision is a picture from scriptures of your desired future. 
catch a vision. Don't allow the society teach you how to raise children. It's a wrong picture. Catch a vision from scriptures on how to raise your children. Hear this and I hear the Holy Ghost. Anyone can breed children. But very few can train children. You can breed children. Just like animals have children. That doesn't equal training children. And let me quickly submit to you. That you are trained well doesn't automatically pass your training to your children. A trained dog doesn't give birth to a trained dog. The dog has to be trained by himself. That I am trained doesn't mean my children will automatically be trained if I do not go through the pains of training them. And that's where many of us make the mistake. We tell our children how we were trained, but we are not training them how we were trained. The reason why God gave you and I children is not to multiply and replenish the earth alone, but because he's looking for a godly seed. Malachi 2 verse 15. And did not he make one? Yet he had the residue of the spirit. And whereof one? That he might seek a godly seed. God wants his presence in every generation. So he gave us children to pass what we know to them. So that they can carry him with them to their generation. I'll share many things I learned from my father and mother. (laughs) This scripture is from my mother. A godly seed. One day she looked at us. And I can see that day and almost weep now. Because I could see the joy of a mother. Not hearing in heaven what the children are doing, but seeing it now. There's a difference. There is rest on every side for my parents. On every side. Number two, biblical key. Is we must understand that God owns our children. God what? Owns them. Be careful how you raise them. Psalm 127 verse 3. Children are a heritage of the Lord. He's the owner. Giving birth doesn't mean, ah, yeah, yeah, Lord, should I tell them? Okay. Ato sagru shadali andudo. Hmm. Hmm. Ephesians 6. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. What a service. Are you ready for light? Yes, Children, do what? It's on your screen. Children, what? Yes, a parent doesn't know this one. Then how you train your child? Children, obey your what? Yes, for this is right. Look at verse 2. Honor. Come. Obey your parents. Honor your father, not your parents. You have been reading it. Obey who? Your parents. Obey your parents. Right? For this is right. Honor your father. They gave birth to you, they are your father. They gave birth to you, they are your mother. Honor them for giving birth to you. But the only ones you should obey are those who parent you. I've not taught this before. Read it in the Bible. Put verse 1. Put it back. 
Children, obey your parents. Who is a parent? One who parents. Hmm? But honor. So don't look down the one who gave birth to you. But the one you should obey is the parent. So if only your mother trains you. Play this message again and again and again, then you understand it. This is too deep for many. Who is a father? One who impregnated the mother. Who is a mother? One who gave birth. Who is a parent? One who trains. Giving birth is not the issue. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. God have mercy. So God owns our children. Psalm 127 verse 3. Children are heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Jeremiah 1 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. He's the owner. Pastor Faith Oedipo said, a child is a gift from God, a blessing to the family, and a unique blend of husband and wife. If you are honest, you see yourself in one way or the other in your children. I know the one who carries most of my DNA, so I know how to deal with him. Because I know how I was dealt with. My second born is exactly the replica of how I was. So I understand, he said. One, one day, hey, I know you. <laughs> because you remind me of me. That's how I was. So God has put them in our charge as caretakers. Let's take care of them well. Please don't mishandle your children. If not, they will grow up and mishandle you. And when I say don't mishandle, I'm not saying spoil them, no. Train them well so that they can give you rest. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, he said, Obey them that have the rule over thee and submit yourselves to them for they watch over your souls. Is that what parents do? As one that may give account. Funny enough, God won't just ask you, did you fulfill the calling I gave you as a pastor? Mighty messages, people healed and delivered, miraculous healings. He will ask you, what of your children? And I wonder how many will pass that test. Today, in my secret, I pray for my father every day. And every, my mother, every day. But when I was growing up, at some point, I asked, is, is this truly my father? <laughs> but now, I know where. Yes, sir. And now, I'm, I, I'm giving him rest. Rest on every side. It's better they hate you now and love you later than love you now and blame you later. They come to us for counseling and say, my father didn't train me well. And you can see it in them that truly they were not trained well. Number three. We must model Jesus to our children. Model Jesus to our children. Now hear this. You are either carnal or spiritual. And you know that like begets like. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. He said, I could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as carnal, even as babes in Christ. They are adults who are babies. They are adults who are carnal. Now, please hear this. Carnality doesn't mean you are a sinner. 
You can be a child of God that will end up going to heaven, but yet cannot. How do I know that? He just told us, you are not growing. I fed you with milk and not with meat. For he that told you were not able to be it. An adult misbehaving in church, how would they raise the children at home? An adult facing the council in church for misbehavior, how would they teach the children at home? An adult suspended for stealing. How will he raise the children not to, not to steal? In Genesis 1, 24 to 25, you know that like would always be get like. So we must beware of what we do before our children. 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, and I believe verse 1. Be ye followers together of me, even as I am of Christ. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17, if you have that. That's Philippians 3, 17. Now, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. Philippians 3, 17 says, be ye followers together of me. Together of me. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Model Jesus. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, he said, Let no man despise thy youth, but be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Deuteronomy chapter 11, open there if you can with me. Verse 18 and verse 19. And then, in fact, we'll read to verse 21. Therefore shall ye lay up these words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Look at verse 19. And ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down. Look at this. When you sit, when you walk, when you lie, you are teaching. Aha. And thou will write them upon the doorposts. Listen to me, men and brethren. Watch what you post in your house as decors. In your house, you have naked women. What will your child become? And you tell me it is art. What you put in your house remains a sign. Put scripture. The picture may be great, but what is the scripture? My wife and I, miss, without us knowing, including yesterday, my, my little boy Joshua, who is a direct replica, so I know how to handle him. He was walking down the stairs and he was reading the signs in the house. They stick there. Watch what you put in the post of your house and at your gate. <laughs> That your days may be multiplied. So there are people who don't die. They live through their children. That your days may be multiplied. Go and review what you have. Hanging in your house. Hmm. Model Jesus. Hey. Oh my God. Model Jesus to them. Modeling talks about showing them. Even to our bathroom, we have scripture. That's one of the reasons I said, Lord, I can't be renting. I can't be renting because when you are renting, they don't post this. Don't no, I can't. When you have your own house, you can post anything you want, as many as you want, anywhere you want. Without permission. 
If you are renting, you say, this is how you can catch a vision and God will give you a house. Not that I just want a big room. What do you want to put there to help your generation? Model Jesus. Show Jesus to them. Recently at a family devotion that we had, it will surprise you, I do devotion with my children every day before covenant hour. Before. <laughs> we learned about idol idolatry in that devotion. And my daughter, Queen Esther, was so happy and excited. She said, before we stepped out of here, she said, Daddy, I really understand this topic. I said, really? She said, an idol is not just anything that we worship, but anything that takes God's place. I said, hey, seven-year-old child. And then I looked at her and I said, like video game. <laughs> and hear this, the most humbly my wife was there. And she looked at me and she said, Daddy, also like phone. <laughs> and I said, but you know, Daddy is on his phone to walk. I'm on my phone to pray. But then as I stepped into the car, I said, even a child is watching. Yes. They are watching you. I say, hey, for my daughter to think phone is an idol. Ha. The one that you are on social media 24-7, they are watching. They are watching. Church will not train your children. School will not train them. I won't go too deep because I don't know if the person is watching. When we're in children's church together, there was a family. All, all of us were pastor's children. If you touch those children, the parents will spark. Today, all of them are spoiled. Including one that has gone to prison. They called me one day from school and they said, hey, we don't know your son misbehaved. We don't want to talk. I said, please beat him. Beat him in this country. One day I was disciplining my, my son here. They say, Miss Babe, I brought him. I said, come to the office. You, by the time I finish with you, he followed me there. As I was disciplining, my wife said, hey, they may be watching on camera. I said, let them watch. I gave birth to my son. You now tell me how to raise him. And when I discipline them, they are marks. Number four, take it. We must accept responsibility to train our children. That's what I just said. Church will not train them. School will not train them. Who will train them? There are people who have come to me to say, Pastor, my son is misbehaving. Train him. I can't train him. I have my own. And my own take priority over any, anybody. I will not train your children. No. Modeling talks about showing. Training talks about instructing. I'm anti my generation, and that's why the difference is clear. Abraham did not pet his children. Are you aware? And you sing, Abraham's blessings are mine. Find out the works of Abraham. He didn't pet them, he commanded them. Any culture outside the Bible is wrong. Including American culture. Very, well. Very, well. Very wrong. Very well. Outside the world. Well. Don't clap. You know me, I'm here and I'm gone. So I'm telling you the truth. You are the ones who are going to live here for life. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. <laughs> oh my God. 
the former treaties have made all the ovulus of all that Jesus both began to model and to instruct. That is real training. In case you are showing them the right way, when last did you instruct them? When we banned video games in our house, as an adult, I've played video games before, so we banned it. Meaning that before it was banned, I couldn't have been playing. You can't ban what you are playing. I told my wife and the kids, I said, now we'll rather give you skills and talents to work on than YouTubing and games. Right now you have a six-year-old as a YouTube star and influencing your children under your roof. So as we canceled video games, we bought basketball, rim, bought trampoline. If you have energy, use it in those areas. <laughs> then ask them, what other skills do you, do you like? Oh, this one, I like this, I like. My son will just be hearing it for the first time now. We've just bought him his, his saxophone has arrived as a gift. It's better than PS5. You know why you can't do me like this, even in choir? I am still in the unit. I grew up in the unit. I still play drums. So I'm not the, old, the average pastor that is saying, what are you saying? Sing it. Mm. It's what, when my parents saw I was kicking things around the house as drumsticks, I would cut the branches and use them as sticks and, 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 and get buckets and be hitting them. They said, let's buy him a drum. He has the energy for that and he has the gift. <laughs> what are you leaving your children with? They will tell you, Daddy, I love you now. Tomorrow they will report you. that you didn't train them well. Accept responsibility. Children's church will not train them. The school system will not train them. Who will train them? You. Abraham did not pet his children. So which Bible are you reading? Oh, in our generation. Can't you see how messed up our generation is? He didn't pet his children. He engaged in commanding them. Genesis chapter 18, verse 17 to 19. In verse 19, he said, I know Abraham, for he will command his children. And, and, and look at how Isaac turned out. Abraham, Isaac. And now we even pray the God of Abraham. But it didn't end with Abraham. The God of Isaac and the God of Israel. What a lineage. What a lineage. But it began with commanding his children. When last did you give your children commandment? Anything they want, please let them do it. Okay. Accept responsibility in our family in America. By 4 a.m., everybody is awake. From father to mother. To all the children, wake up Israel, wake up Queen Esther, wake up Joshua, wake up peace. The day has begun at four. <laughs> oh, you are harsh. That's how I was brought up. And that's why I'm correct. I am correctly correct. Without, please don't clap. Please don't clap. That's not the essence. I am correctly correct. With how I was brought up. The people of the other faith, when do they pray? 5 a.m.? Are you aware of that? Then when do they wake up? Then we who are believers, we are sleeping. <laughs> At 4 o'clock, our bodies have become used to it. And I step into the bathroom where I do my personal prayer, no distraction. My wife steps into their rooms, begins to wake them up. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. The day has started. The day has started. It will be unfair for my children to be at your level when you are not paying the same price. No matter the hand I lay on them or the leg I lay on them, you are not putting the same sacrifice. It is responsibility. 
In Genesis chapter 14, verse 14, war broke loose and they stole Lot. <laughs> and Abraham armed his trade servants born in his house. He didn't go to outsource military. The military was under his roof. And he brought back his brother and his wives and all that were taken. I told them a classic example. When I was coming here 2018, I'm not the first to come here. And I'm not sure it was ever the plan for me to come here. But they looked and looked and looked and looked and looked. When will this church buy a property? When will they buy a property? And they found, they said, okay, we have tried everybody here. Now let's get Isaac. I've given everybody a chance. Let me get my son. That's the meaning. Let my son come. They pulled me from my last station. I said, okay, sit down. I know God has embraced you in several areas. Nobody would doubt that church has grown under you. Nobody would doubt you carry the grace of God for healing. But I'm sending you because the church there doesn't have a home. In other words, that was an Abrahamic move. I have tried those trained outside my house. But now let me send one trained in my house. He said, go, come back with a property the church owns. God bless you, receive grace. And I left. 18 months after touching ground, property was bought clean, five minutes from here. Trained and born. Don't you like to be able to send your children and come back with proofs? It takes training. It takes training. There is no prayer. It's training. There is no pray all night prayer is not all, 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 all life training. There are different things. After you pray and pray, train and train. When my assignment is done here, I'm out. Done what I've come to do. Is it this year? It may be. Is it next year? It may be. I'm not one of those who are looking for a place to come and hang out. When you see any task, when you have been trained, your senses will come alive. So COVID came and the Lord showed me that there is a way to train in Bible school. Now as a disservice, we have about 900 registered which this branch and the whole North America to get since inception has never had in one month. 450 plus for BCC, 450 plus for LCC. In our house, there is no excuse for failure. I'm the only pastor that has pastored you one leg without pandemic, one leg in pandemic with proofs. How did that come? Training. Training. And training. So accept responsibility. Don't be like Eli. <laughs> Prophet Eli. Dickness Eli. They're in every church. Service unit leader Eli. Pastor Eli. Pastor Mrs. Eli. And Dickin Eli. You carry a lot of anointing. But nothing can be seen on your children. Ask Eli. A prophet giving a prophetic lineage but will not train his children. He will tell them, I heard you are doing this, it is wrong. Please stop. And the two of them died in one day. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 22 to 34. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. Don't be prophet Samuel. <laughs> Do you notice you can greatly succeed in ministry and woefully fail in parenting? Look at Samuel. His words never fail to the ground. Can I submit to you? Come, come, come. Look at me. Bring the camera here. I would rather succeed in raising my seed than be a successful pastor. Yes, sir. That is my first calling. Samuel's words never fell to the ground, 1 Samuel 3, 19. But in 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1 to 7, his children failed. 
and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after liquor and took bribes and perverted judgment. He was too busy with his priestly robe and blessing people, forgetting his children. Let me humble you. Church cannot train your children. School cannot train your children. Who will train them? Myself. You. But look at the perfect example we have. Abraham. God said, I know him. That he will command his children. And his household after time. I'm one of the most difficult people to live with. Because if we do devotion, you can't claim to be sleeping. In my house? No. Children are awake at four. You are now sleeping at four. Not in my house. Do that in your house. People don't like sleeping in my house. Oh. You, hey. Because children will expose you. They are the ones waking you up. Auntie, please wake up. We usually pray. In my house? If you are children of Abraham, John 8.39, then do the works of Abraham. 4 a.m., we are awake. Even when I was growing up, we didn't wake up that early because there was no covenant hour of prayer then. But one of the things God taught me, corporate prayer doesn't equal family prayer. Be angry if you like. Do you know my children have not missed covenant hour prayer since it began this year? Not once. The only time they don't come is on Saturday so they can sleep. If you see that scripture is going slowly, it's because one of them is probably the one changing the scripture. All of them are below 10. That's how we were trained. I've been in the service unit of choir since. So somebody now saying, I don't know why he's so interested in choir. That's how I was trained. And you can't detrain me. I was trained to serve. In any church where I pastor, I am part and parcel of the choir. If I tell you you are not doing it well, take it. I've been there before you got there. I don't know why this man likes music so much. He's from small. He's not Maryland. We had to retune Maryland to where it should be. What number are we? Five. Take responsibility in giving timely instruction, correction, and rebuke to your children. But before we leave that, go to number four because I promise you I'll give you something extra here. In this part of the world, you don't believe in the rod, but it's the Bible. If any scripture I show is not in the Bible, then don't do it. Second Samuel, chapter 7. Verse 14. <laughs> I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Is your Bible. So there is the rod of men and there is the rod of God. Take another scripture. Proverbs 22, I believe, and verse 15. Proverbs 22 and verse 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far. It is too late for me to be foolish. The rod has chased far foolishness. When I look at adults behaving foolishly, they lacked the rod. The kind of rod we had, you didn't have a choice to be foolish. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13 and verse 14. 
withhold not correction from a child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and deliver his soul from hell. <laughs> I don't want my children to end in hell. I love you so much. But in this case, I will beat you so well. Please listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not one of the people who came here to settle. I am here to give you the truth. If what I'm saying would check me out of this nation, so be it. I didn't come here to settle. The Lord. The rod. I gave birth to my children. You can't tell me I can't touch them. It's not a public child. When it turns out right, you will clap for me. Don't tell me you pack your load. I'm, I'm ready. I've packed. It's not today. The rod of men. Winners wake up. I have personally seen a lot of our pastor's children go wayward. A lot. In this commission. A, a, a lot. A lot. You serving God doesn't equal your children turning right. You better hear the truth. And then of course you have the rod of God. There shall come for the rod out of the stem of Jesse. <laughs> Proverbs 23, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. Real comfort comes from first correcting and in the process directing. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. So now we can jump to number 5. We must take responsibility in giving timely instruction. Why? Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, including parenting. This is a caution. It's almost becoming late for somebody who is watching. I remember my small daughter, Peace, three-year-old, telling me, no, but daddy, I want it. I said, it's not what you want. It's what I tell you you need. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. I said, bend down. <laughs> bend down and take some to help your future. Please hear me. Anybody that knows me closely know I love my children. I love, hear me. My wife and my children, that's why when I see a woman doing like this funny around me, the devil in you, because he's not here I started. Please don't try it. I love my wife and I, I'm warning you. If you are hearing me, I am warning you the warning of God. Don't come close to them. I love them that way, but that won't take me from disciplining them. Including this morning, two of them got some strokes. I'm not teaching you anything to excite you. I beg you, please don't clap. If you get what is being taught, it will help you. If this is the last message I preach before I leave you in this branch, I think I've done what God asked me to do. Timely instruction. You are trying to correct a man. It is late. <laughs> Train a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, they will not depart. So there is a time to train when they are young. When they are old, leave them to the mercy of God. It is too late. Hallelujah. I had one of us, pastors in the ministry, we're all growing up as children together. If you touch in teens church those days, their children, you will hear it from them. They were pastors under Bishop Oedipo. Not Bishop Oedipo. But if you beat us, we couldn't report. Because you'll be asked, what did you do that you were beaten? 
That's the first question. So when you are beaten, you keep quiet and clean your eyes. Because you can't go home and mention that a teacher beat you. That is the second round waiting. Because why were you beaten? Not who beat you. This pastor will deal with the teachers. Show me who dare touched you. While another parent will say, why were you beaten? So we could not. I was beaten even in school and could not report. Because no matter who you are in society, if anybody corrects your child, it's a privilege. Yes. Yes. Timely corrections before it becomes too late. And so in our family, no child plays video games. From 2020. Can I not afford it? I can afford it without thinking. My daughter told me one day, she said, Daddy, I just enjoyed playing roadblocks. Many of you know it. I, I, I so enjoyed playing roadblocks. I played with somebody in my school. I said you could communicate with somebody in your school on roadblocks. That's the end of roadblocking. <laughs> because you can't tell what your children will be introduced to. Now I can decide to buy any toy I like because I've been trained well. That was where it ended. Timely. Timely. Timely correction. Number six. So daily into the future of your children. Oh, wherever my wife is, I love you, darling. Myself and my wife, it is heavy labor. Heavy labor. The way God will reward some people who don't have titles, you'll be shocked. Heavy labor. One day she had walked and walked and walked and needed rest. You will remember recently. I said, don't worry, I'll take care of them. Brought them to church. I've had to take them to the shower to shower them. Labor. So daily into your children. It's not once and for all. It is daily. What are some daily spiritual seeds? Because Genesis 8.22 says, As long as the earth remaineth, seed time, and harvest, and cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, verse 8, and verse 9. Place it, please, if you have it. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Look at verse 8. For he that soweth unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we will reap if we faint not. So A. The first kind of seed you should keep saying, sowing daily is keep sowing spiritual seeds. He that swear to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Keep sowing daily seeds. If you don't yet have one, if you are wise, start devotion tomorrow morning. Keep sowing spiritual seeds. Place my family devotion schedule on the screen. 20 minutes only. Opening prayer, two minutes. Praise and worship, four minutes. Prayer points for the church, for family, for friends, for school, for work, etc. Four minutes. The word or the lesson of the day, seven minutes. And closing prayer, three minutes, 20 minutes. This is our routine daily.
These are our devotion books. Devotion book for 2020. You can see, this is not something I bought to teach you. It's what we use. 2021. Place those books, please, on the screen. The first one you see to the left is the book by Miles Monroe. I remember the first day we began this devotion, me heading the devotion. Because God said to Abraham, I know he will command. So it's not something to delegate. So we began to look and look, see our notes inside the devotion book. The first lesson there was the wealthiest spot on the earth. First lesson. Where's the wealthiest spot? The graveyard. All our children know it like the back of their hand. You don't need to crack your brain too much. What do I teach them? Find a devotional and begin from there. This one is Jesus 365. This one will help your children fall in love with Jesus. I'm watching them fall in love at an earlier age than I did. Till last week. Daddy, can't we go to church to help? I said, help to do what? Help them with whatever they need. At what age? But it comes with labor. We will not leave our house no matter how late we are without family devotion. Let church run, but let's train children. Keep sowing spiritual seeds. We have in our family what we call, you can take that off, place on there now, the Isaac Oedipo family creed. We as members of the Isaac Oedipo family believe our mission is to fear God. Obey his commandments. Be earthly relevant because like you hear me teach in church, you are not the salt of the church, you are the salt of the world. And be heaven bound and will accomplish this by the following. Look at your screen. That was established in 2019. It's not because I'm doing teaching. I now quickly formed something. What would we do? Honoring God and always put him first. Holding God's word in high esteem as the final authority. Reading our Bibles and praying every day. Deeply caring for one another. Looking out for one another. And loving one another with the love of Christ. Being thankful to God. First for the abundance of all things. And next appreciate one another genuinely and be grateful for every act of kindness. Praying for one another and being genuinely happy for each other's successes and accomplishments is from childhood. Train them to say when Isaac does well, Jacob, don't be offended. Yours is coming. It's from now. Being respectful and compassionate towards everyone you come in contact with, whether young or old, privileged or unprivileged, rich or poor. So we have taught them, don't look down on anybody based on what they have. If you and I have anything, it's a privilege. You are not better than them. It's from now. Not walking in selfishness, unforgiveness, hatred, murmurings, complaints, gossip, slander, malice, envy, strife, and every walk of darkness and negative character traits. Can you imagine if our adults were trained this way? How sweet would church be? Being content and happy with anything we have per time. Not coveting anything that anyone else has. So now that they have stopped playing video games, they go to a friend's house, they say, mommy, they have a PS4. Daddy, they have a PS4. That is them. This is us. What more? Living out the fruits of the spirit towards self, family, and everyone daily. What are these fruits? Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness. This is 2019 that I'm reading to you. Living godly lives and denouncing sin daily. Working hard and working smart. Being diligent in all we do and how we live. Choosing to finish whatever is it is that we start. Don't start and abandon. Start and finish. Lending out to the needy around us part-time as God permits 
to the world at large. So when the pandemic started, because we had already done this creed, you saw that on social media, even my babies were knocking on the door of houses saying we have a tray of water. You kept your children afraid of the virus. We went out. Not celebrating past or current successes or glory beyond the wire. So there is a time you stop celebrating what happened. Look for something next to happen. Pressing forward towards the mark, the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. 2019. Here are the rules and regulations for our family. Place it on the screen. As a privileged son or daughter of Isaac and I will meet you with Dekbo, I will live by the following rules. Number one, I will pray and read my Bible today. I will not watch TV during any school week. I will read a book daily. I will help around the house. I will obey our parents without complaining. I will honor and respect my parents always in all things. I will make the right decisions today whether my parents are watching or not. One of the first scriptures we taught our children is that the eyes of the Lord is in every place beholding the evil and the good. I will go to bed early every day. I will go to church with joy and enthusiasm every week. You are not permitted to frown. I will keep my room neat and clean always. I will greet people respectfully today without my parents or anyone else reminding me to do so. I will care for my siblings and help them today. I will finish my healthy food because it is the right thing to do and it is good for my health. In our household, Chick-fil-A McDonald's is once a month. We are not chick fil Once a month. I can't love my children and have them go through the health risk that I went through in the name of I can afford it. Hmm. I understand that there are consequences for every action, every decision, every step I take. Some consequences are bad if I take bad steps. Some consequences are good when I take good steps. Therefore, I will take only the right decisions, right actions, and right steps. So help me God. Signed, Israel J. Oedipo. We are not lucky. There's a principle. So spiritual see. B, sow educational seeds. And I'm going to hurt you in this point. And the reason is to help your senses come alive. Is free education bad? No, absolutely not. But if you can afford something better, pay the price. Your care is not free if you have one. Your house is not free. Even if you didn't put down payment, there is monthly payment. So you pay for a car, you pay for a house, but zero on your children. <laughs> Who are you deceiving? If a man provided not for his own house, he is worse than an infidel and has denied the faith. Yes, if you can't afford, no problem. But if you are driving, drop your car first and put the children in school first. That's when you know if you really value them. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 17. These four children were smart in all knowledge and skill. 
If you find out that your children have any interest in any instrument or to develop any skill, pay for that rather than paying for a video game. My son Joshua is exactly like me, so the only thing he wants to learn is the drum. We bought one for him. And I've gotten a lesson teacher for him. Another one says he's a saxophone, he wants to learn. He just collected the saxophone today. It's not because I'm preaching something. No. I've been discussing it since. There's a teacher for him. I don't do like this. If I don't do it, I won't teach you. Another one said his keyboard he wants to learn. Get those things rather than games. I don't want to raise skilled YouTubers. I want to raise skilled worshippers. That's my desire. Instead of the video game, let's give you a basketball court. Let's play sports together. Let's take a walk together. Let's do activities together. If you do what they do, your children cannot be different from them. See, so emotional seeds. I still am struggling to finish. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Don't be the reason they say I will not serve God because of how he has treated me. In Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 28, he said, encourage him. Encourage Joshua. Encourage him. But charge Joshua and encourage him. Don't allow your children's emotions to go down the drain. D, sow healthy seeds in lifestyle. What they eat, they are watching. What you eat, they are watching. E, sow leadership seeds. Start giving them leadership tasks around the house. You take care of this. You take care of that. You take care of this. Sow financial seeds. What does that mean? Cater for them as you are able and as they need, not as they want. In case you are not aware, the more children you have, the more financial responsibility it is. Ask me, I have four. Salary is not a dot of what I spend monthly. G, sow giving seeds. Raise givers. The reason why some adults are stingier than stingy is because the giving seed wasn't planted in them. Pastor David Ibiome taught me that any time you are going to see your spiritual fathers and your children are there, even if you pretend that they shouldn't come, he said, never give seeds on behalf of your family. Give seed for you and your wife and from the reservation of the children, let them give. You are teaching them how to give. Not this is from our family. Mm -mm. This is from my wife and I and my children said I should give you this $10. It is worth more than the $10,000 you give them because you are helping them sow a seed. Allow them to love giving. So one time after the hoverboard of one spoiled and we repaired it and it began to work, you know what we said? This cannot be here. You can't have two hoverboards. You are one human being. Which one of your friends do you want to give it to? It's from now it begins. If you bring up people as givers, you will give cheaply. Please hear me, I'm not here to excite you. Your children are watching you. You never give to anybody. When they now grow up and they are blessed, why are you wondering why they are not giving you? They watched you. Please listen to this and listen, 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 listen. I gave my first one million naira seed 
In 2015, in South Africa, this is the first time I'm saying it openly to Bishop Oedipo. At what age? Everything God blessed me with in the Wonder Double. I packaged it and gave it to him and wrote him a letter. There is a way you give a seed that it may not be noticed. But at least to my little extent, something dropped in his account and he did beam. And he saw Isaac. He called back. He said, you sent me this? I said, yes, sir. And he vomited blessings. I can't be poor. It's not that, what are you saying? What are you? I've been giving sins. Giving sins. Your children cannot share toys. You are, you are raising stingy children. I'm not stingy. You know why? I've been giving sins. The reason why some of you are very stingy, even from school you were not giving. When I went to file my taxes recently, the whole giving I did last year, if you put it with my income, that church, church, church paid me, is about the same. The tax filer said, how is this possible? All the income was given. Don't bl I'm blessed, though, very dangerously blessed. And not from this branch. Not from where? It's not members. So nobody has an idea, even covenant room. <laughs> My source is not here. You know, say, no, I know what he's getting. You don't know. Ah, you have no idea. Covenant room here in this branch doesn't know. I'm sure some are angry hearing it, but it's the truth. Start teaching your children to give. My wife's sister was having birthday. The children said, we cannot go there without a seed. So they went into their piggy bank to get one one dollar. I said, auntie, this is for you. She said, from where? She said, they said, from us. All of them below 10. H, so purpose seeds. So what? Purpose seeds. Begin to show them the importance of discovering their purpose. There are adults now who don't know their purpose. Number seven, we must model a godly family before our children. It's not the same that you hear. Modeling Jesus is not the same as modeling a godly family. In Acts chapter 1 verse 1, he said, O Theophilus, I bring to you all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Training, therefore, is not complete when you are just telling. You must move from telling to showing. Why are marriages today having issues, among others? It's because most of our parents, particularly from the African heritage, never modeled affection before their children. They do affection in the bedroom. Not in the open. No, they shouldn't see it. Ah, they should see it. Because no child in his right mind knows that anything is taking place in the bedroom. What they can't see in the living room, don't expect them to catch visions of the bedroom. You have never hugged your wife. You have never kissed your wife. You've never held your wife. You've never told her, my wife, I love you. Don't say it the way I say it. I love you. No, you say it softly. I'm preaching now, so that's... Because some of you too, you won't use wisdom. You now go and say, I love you. Is that sense? That's not the kind of... I'm just... You say, baby, I love you. You are sweet. Not according to the word of God. Uh, in, in Psalm 39, verse 6. I shall love you, so I... Agape you. You think that's how I believe? 
Now hear this and hear this well. If you claim your family is godly, then your family should be loving. And if your family is loving, your family will be caring. And you can't claim you are caring without showing affection before your children. Finally, number eight, we must bless our children continually. <laughs> Father, thank you for giving me parents that kept blessing me, even when it didn't look like I deserved the blessing. Continuously so. My brother and I, we were the last to pick up academically. All the girls, very sharp. When I go to take my result, those days, before looking at it, I will open it because it's written in black and red. Black means pass. Red means fail. So I will put it to the sun <laughs> and see what reflects back. If it is red, I know that I am going to face the music again. But hear this. In no case did my father or mother ever tell me you are dull. And in the same school where I came third to the last, I ended collecting prizes of excellence before graduating. Why? The blessing. I beg you, please bless them. If you curse them, God will hear. If you bless them, God will also hear. Look at this with me to show you that this is scriptural. In Genesis chapter 25, we see how Isaac blessed his sons. It was an automatic way in the kingdom of the Old Testament. We will not just live an inheritance of houses, but we live an inheritance of blessing. Blessing, blessing. In Genesis chapter 49, maybe we'll read this one. Genesis chapter 49, verse 1 and 2. Genesis 49, verse 1 and 2. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you of that which shall befall you in the last days. That is, come let me bless you. The blessing is the telling. The blessing is the telling. And then he began to vomit blessings upon them and bless them and bless them and bless them and bless them. What you tell them and show them is not a substitute to what you release upon them. Bless them from your heart. I've been blessed and blessed and blessed that it is too late for me to be cursed. Keep blessing them. You will do well. You will be greater than me. In my lifetime, I will see you sitting on thrones. In my lifetime, I will be taking notes from you. Bless them. I was shocked the day my mother told me I watch your messages. My own mother. Bless them. I was shocked the day Bishop Oedeko hinted that he has checked our service. Bless them. You are blessed. You will succeed. You will go forward. You will not be delayed. You will not be derailed. You will not be with wrong company. You will stand. These are blessings you give them daily. No one ends up great accidentally. It is intentionally. So bless them intentionally. I am not a product of modeling only or training, but I'm a product of blessing. There is nothing else I would leave, of course, leave inheritance and all those things for children, but I must leave the blessing. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. And you don't need to be a pastor to bless your children. You are the prophet of your own house. Bless them. Bless them. And bless them. I submit to you a few things that we do. It's not all. you want them to turn out right, start from now. Yes, they are still children, but let's start from now. 
May the Lord give you understanding and grant you grace. Say with me, it is hard work. Listen to me. I drive my children to school daily. I am your pastor, but I drive them daily. Can't somebody else do it for me? No. Somebody else cannot train my children. 35 minutes from covenant hour of prayer. So when you come here and say, I don't know where pastor is. Pastor is training his children. Go and train your own. 35 minutes to school because I must get them the best school that my pocket can afford. They've been in school since October. Somebody said there's virtual learning. Let me submit to you. Virtual is not the same as actual. Yes, when they get back to school, you will know. I'm telling you the truth. It's not the same. Someone who doesn't know ABC is not in virtual class. It's not Bible school we're talking about here. Bible school, you are working. You are doing other things. I learned that from George Pearson's. There are people I watch. He said, because a time will come, you won't need to take your children to school again. You miss this stage, you have missed it. So every day, when you see me, when we're doing Zoom, and I say, God bless you, I'm out. And I don't know why this man will not greet us. The man is driving 35 minutes. You are sitting at home. Hard work! So when you hear that I'm resting, I really need it. Don't say, what is he doing? When, like this week now, some days you won't see me. When I say I'm resting, I really need it. You are blessed. Thank you once again for watching this video. Remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'd like to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel so you can be fed with faith menu from time to time. Um, if you haven't yet done so, tell a friend about this. Encourage them to join us every Sunday and every Wednesday. We have amazing content being released to bless you, spirit, soul, and body. Hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.